Hi there, my name is Castor by Ascona and I am here to guide you through a lovely tabletop flow. It's gonna be about 30, 45 minute class. If you have yoga blocks, please bring them on your mat. If you have water, drink some. Wherever you're at, prepare for a lovely um, tap-in. If you need an extra cushion for your knees, tabletop is like all fours, please grab it. I have an extra little pad here. But we begin to arrive here for a little mini flow. Bring your shoulders over your wrist and your hips over your knees, ground down through the palms, the tops of the feet and the kneecaps. Look between your hands, press down to separate the shoulder blades. Exhale, tuck, tuck the tailbone slightly. <sighs> Breathe in through your nose and exhale all of it out. And we begin. Inhale for cow pose, flick the tailbone to the sky, lengthen the belly, hug your elbows in. Broaden the heart, shoulder blades come together, chin to the sky and sustain here. It's a huge backside flexion or just a little bit. For three, relax the forehead. Two, lengthen the throat. One, exhale, press the ground away. Round the upper spine, root the tailbone down, mad cat. So separate the shoulder blades profoundly. Sometimes I like to wag my tail a little bit here. The shoulders are away from the ears for three. Contract the abdominal muscles, two. And one. Now go back and forth, pendulate between cat cows. Inhale, lengthen the belly, look up. Tailbone goes to the sky. Exhale, press the ground away. Round the whole spine, tuck your chin and look between the thighs. Free movement here. If you wanna shift your weight forward and backwards, separate your stance, whatever feels good. Lubricating the spine. Three more times. The next, time you ex the next time you exhale and enter into cat pose, root down through your toes. Press, press, press. You can look between the hands instead of tucking your chin, trying to hover the knees here. So press into the ground, round the upper spine, root down through the toes to lift, hover the knees. Try not to lift the knees too high. See how that feels. Now try to bring your shoulders into a neutral position. Heart goes lower to the mat. Hug your elbows in. See how that feels. Keep the knees hovered. For three, press down through the index finger mound. Two, and one. Lower the knees, back to regular tabletop. You can wag your tail if you'd like. Okay, moving on. Look between the hands, tabletop position. Exhale, look over your right shoulder. Bring your right shoulder closer to your right hip. Lengthen the left side core. Sustain. On the next inhale, reverse. Go back to tabletop. Exhale, other side. Look over your left shoulder. Contract the left side body. Now, at your own pace, wag your tail getting into the side body, the obliques. I like to do audible exhales and sometimes I even do two pulses on each side. What does your body need today? Nice. A few more times just like that. 
until we move on. Slowly bring your hips back and then step your right foot forward. Bring your right foot between your hands, then rise the torso over the hips. We're aiming for a 90, 90 degree angle with the legs. Palms come together at the center of the heart, the center of the chest, and look forward, long spine. The next exhale, little twist. Bring the left elbow to the right knee. Look up for more of a challenge. Torso twist for three, two, one. Slowly get out of it. Hinge the torso forward, come back to tabletop. Same thing, hips go back, step the left foot forward, rise the torso over the hips, palms come together at the center of the chest. Inhale, the crown of the head rises towards the sky, exhale, twist, look over your left shoulder, palms come together at the center of the chest, and look up. Three, two, one. Reverse, palms to the mat, step the foot back. Now kick stand out your right leg, like here, and you can root down the sole of the foot or not. So the right leg is extended beside you. Now, the right hand can walk out slightly. Inhale, reach and extend the left arm up. Stack the left shoulder over the right. Reach the left arm up. And exhale, look at the left palm as it goes underneath you and reaches towards that foot. Tap the shoulder and then come right back up. Three times, just like this. Exhale, weave it through. And then the last time, inhale, reach. Exhale, reach again. And then tap the shoulder down and then bring it down. Thread the needle. If you want to connect that foot to the hand, you can. You can bring your right hand to the hip and look up. Whatever your body wants today, serve it. Root the right palm down, bring your body up, and then change sides. So kick stand out the left leg this time. Wrists are underneath the shoulders. Walk the right hand out. Now walk the left hand out slightly and then reach the right arm up. Look up towards the sky. Reach that hand up. Then exhale, look at the palm as it goes underneath you and away. Tap the shoulder two more times. Nice. Last time, reach as far away as you can and then relax on that shoulder. Whatever you want with your left hand, whatever you want with your right hand. For three, two, one. Bring the left palm to the ground, come back up. Nice, nice. Okay, we're back at tabletop position. Okay, externally rotate the left leg, lift it up like you're a puppy peeing on a fire hydrant or a frog. Whatever you want to envision today, press down into the palms evenly. Now pulse that left knee up, contract the glute for five, four, three, two, one, exhale, bring the knee towards the tricep. So hug the left thigh in and then extend it behind you. Make sure the hips are grounded or are pointing towards the mat. Do this motion three times. Exhale, bring it in, elbow tip to the tricep. Inhale, extend. Exhale. Inhale. The next time your leg is extended behind you, cross it behind your knee, getting into a cow face pose on, um, with the leg. So sit the sit bones down, 
This is like a modified child's pose. But then once you sit those sit bones down, rise the torso over the hips. See if you can find both butt cheeks to the ground. If this feels good, let's invite the arms. So the right knee is over the left, so that means the right arm is under the left. So inhale, reach your arms up, look up. Exhale, wrap the right arm under the left. You can do one cross or two, whatever feels good. Reach the arms up, exhale, bring them down. Reach the arms up, look up. Exhale, bring them down. One more time. Look up, reach up. Exhale. If you wanna fold forward, you can for a moment. But then reach and extend the arms in front of you. Child's pose. Root down through the right knee. Reverse the same way you came in. Back to tabletop. Let's go to the other side. The right leg this time lifts outwards, externally rotate that right hip. Little pulses, knee towards the sky, activating that right glute for five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful. Bring the right knee towards the right tricep. <sighs> Exhale, extend it behind you. Right knee towards the right tricep five or so times like this, following their breath, going slower than you'd like. And the same thing as last time. The next time the leg extends behind you, cross it behind that knee, press into the palms to bring your hips back. Adjust as needed to sit the sit bones down as we come into that cow-faced pose. Once you're here, reach the arms up and look up, and then cross the left arm under the right. You can do a bind, double bind, look up. Exhale, bring the arms down. Inhale, look up. Exhale, bring the arms down. One more time. Bow forward. And then the same way you went in, try to get out of it. Until eventually we're sitting down on our heels, thighs together, Vajrasana pose. If you'd like to tuck your chin for a moment before we move on, close your external gaze. And let's move on. Bring your palms to the mat. Tabletop pose, hips over knees, shoulders over wrists. Now root down through the toes to lift and hover the knees. So we're in a regular tabletop, neutral spine, neutral shoulders, neutral pelvis, okay? Press down into the mat and hover the knees. See how that feels. If you bring your knees too high, it's too easy. So really try to bring them as low as you can. Press into the mat, maybe you round your upper spine, separate the shoulders slightly, contract, the abs, so low ribs come closer to the hip bones. If the knees come up, lower them a little bit, they're hovering, and we're sustaining here. If you wanna shift your weight forward and bring it back, if your body wants to move a little, you can, or you do that static, no motion hold for five, four, three, root down through the index finger mound, two, one, lower the knees down, Inhale, look up, cow pose, hug your elbows in, tail goes towards the sky, open the heart. Exhale, press the ground away, round your spine, cat pose. Two times like this, inhale. Exhale, push. Last time, inhale. Exhale. Now let's do some barrel-like movements. Listen and follow along, or if you know what I'm talking about, then just do you. <sighs> Inhale, cow pose. Look up, lengthen the belly, open the heart, 
flick the tailbone to the sky. Exhale, look over the right shoulder, bring the right shoulder closer to the right hip. Press the ground away, mad cat. Inhale, look over your left shoulder, look up. So we're doing this motion of like creating circles with the crown of our head, with the pelvis. Shoulders are doing the circular motion. If you want to bend one elbow and the other, separate the stance. Really, you can get into it in whatever way you'd like. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. <sighs> My only request, go slower than you'd like. Maybe you use your eyes as a tool. Wherever you're at, reverse. So see if you can do it without getting confused. If you're not used to it, it's okay. But just see. Okay. Great. That felt good. Let's get into the wrist a little bit. Walk the fingertips towards the outer edges of the mat. Sway side to side. Maybe you lift one palm and lean into the other and then change sides. See if that feels good. If you're like, Cass, I need more. Walk your fingertips towards so that they're facing your knees, the thin side part of your forearms facing forward. Knuckles can raise, fingertips are white. You can shift your weight forward and backwards. Some people even like to do waves with the spine here. So little cat cows. Whatever you're doing, just remember, lengthen the thin side part of the forearm. So we're stretching the wrists here. Some people like to bend one elbow, bend the other. That's your prerogative. Do what feels good in your body today. I'm gonna give you about 30 more seconds. Okay, that was about 30 seconds. Slowly walk your fingertips to face forward, back to regular Barmanasana tabletop pose. Little wrist push-ups to bring some strength to our wrist. The knees can come together or stay apart. Walk them a little further away from you. The shoulders are over the wrists. The thumbs are hovering. You can lift one palm, root down through the four knuckle mounds and then lower, lift the other palm and lower. Lift and lower one at a time, or if you want more, lift and lower both palms at the same time. The thumbs are hovering. Keep the arms as straight as possible. If it's too easy, make sure the shoulders are over the wrists. Walk the knees back. If it's too hard, walk your knees closer to your hands. Go faster than you'd like for five, four, fire. Three, two, one. Woo wee! Walk the knees towards your hands. Sit down on your heels. Counter stretch for the wrist. Place the tops of the wrists onto the thighs. And look at the palms. Lean one side and lean on the other. This should feel lovely on the tops of the hands and the wrists. If this is not feeling lovely, maybe you squeeze your hand in, hands or try to bring them into fist. It looks kind of funny. <laughs> okay, once you feel good there, you can walk your hands, the tops of your hands, further towards your knees and then walk them closer towards your groin until eventually we're done with that. If you want to shake your hands or create little circles, figure eights with your wrist, whatever your body, your nervous system wants right now, give it, give it it, give it. <laughs> okay, nice. You should be feeling pretty good, feeling pretty warmed up. Let's move on, yeah? Come back to tabletop position. A few cat cows, inhale, look up, flick the tailbone to the sky. 
exhale around the spine, root your tailbone down. So two opposite motions of the shoulders and the pelvis. The next time you arrive in cat pose, Marijariasana, do the same thing we did before. Root down through the toes as you lift and hover the knees. As you're doing this, slowly bring your hips to the sky. So we're kind of going from a mad cat um, turbo dog, so a cat pose with the knees hovered, and then we're rising, bringing the thighs towards the belly. So we're pressing into the palms, reaching our hips back, and not going into a downward dog. It's more of like this modified downward dog. So try to hug the side ribs to the thighs, press into the palms, and then come back to where we started. Do this four times. You can either um, do this motion, um, inhale to bring the hips back or exhale, whatever feels good for you. You should be feeling some fire in the quads. The last time we sustain the thighs to the low belly, press, press into the hands, shoulders come near your ears, compression, and then bring the knees down Child's pose, Ananda Balasana. Bring the tops of the feet to the mat, reach the hands forward, forehead to the mat. <sighs> Try to bring the armpits closer to the mat. Nice lengthening from the hands to the hips. <sighs> Inhale to rise back to tabletop position. Lift the right knee up, point the right toes towards the sky. Keep the hips squared, right glute is activated. Sus sustain, or if you want more, pulse the right toes towards the sky. Like you're trying to tap the sky with your big toe. Activate the whole right glute, hamstring. Keep doing this. Press down evenly through the palms, or if you want more, root down through the right palm as you lift and extend the right arm in front of you. The right shoulder comes near the ears. The right thumb tor comes towards the sky. You're a hitchhiker. So the, right, the left thumb, I meant, goes towards the sky. So we're doing opposite arm and leg. The, the big toe and the big thumb are trying to touch the sky for five, four, three, two, one, slowly go back, prepare for the other side. <sighs> Root down through all four corners of the hands, all 10 fingers. Root down through the right kneecap and the right top of the foot. As you lift the left leg up, point the left toes towards the sky, square the hips. Little pulses, so we're not trying to stack the left hip over the right. Same thing as the other side. And then when you're ready, lean into the left palm, reach the right arm in front of you, extend it. Right thumb goes towards the sky. Little pulses at the same time for five, four, three, two, one. Woo wee! You can bring your chin to your chest. Whatever you gotta do to shake it off. <laughs> and we move on, maintaining movement. Okay, step the right foot in front of you. So if you like to do what I do usually, I bring the hips back a little and I use the momentum to step the right foot through. If it doesn't go all the way through, I use my right hand to guide it. Until we're back to this 90-90, somewhat with the legs. If you wanna use your blocks, you can here. You don't have to if you don't have blocks. But the idea is you have this 90, 90 degree with the legs. Then the palms come to the block or the mat. You flip your back toes under and you extend. So I like to lift the front foot up. You don't have to, you can keep the sole of the front foot down. But it's like this modified or this variation of triangle. You can feel a big lengthening in the left calf, so the back calf. You're trying to bring that heel to the mat. Exhale, go back down. If you wanna do more of a lunge, where you're doing kind of like a heart opener, you can. You can do dynamic movement, but we're going from triangle 
to lunge or 90, 90 degree, you know, whatever feels good here. Following your movement, maybe you go slower than you'd like. Three more times, each pose. Okay, the next time you enter into this triangle variation, stay here, walk your blocks or your hands kind of in between your legs. Okay, you can root down through the, the front foot, but the idea is to lengthen this to the back and like kind of fold forward, lean into the hands. If you need to adjust and narrow the stance, you can, but the idea is to lift the back leg, okay? So we're rooting down through this, the, the blocks or the ground, rooting down through the front foot, folding forward, huge abdominal flexion to lift the back leg and tuck it in. See how that feels? Maybe you're like, Cass, I don't know what you're talking about. The simple idea of trying to do it is enough. So trying to press into the hands, press into the front feet, round the upper spine, huge abdominal flexion to bring that back foot up and tuck that heel towards the glute. Try this a few times. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. On the exhale is when I like to lift. Maybe if you're really flexible, you're feeling the right thigh really hugged into that side body. Okay, that's enough. Go back into the 90, 90 degree legs. Go back into tabletop. Moving on. Wag your tail, bring the hips back and step that front foot through. I meant that left foot through. Okay, same thing as other side. Maybe it looks different. Arriving into this kind of like modified lunge, going into the triangle, play with the different um, ways of activating um, the pose. Maybe you don't go into the full rendition of it. What does your body need today? Do you need to go slower? Do you need to relax between the forehead? I mean, between the eyes? <laughs> Usually that's me. I like a permanent angry face. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. Okay. Until eventually we end up in this triangle. Okay? Once you're in this triangle, see how this feels. Adjust the blocks or your hands between the legs. Adjust the width. Maybe you need to narrow your stance. <sighs> Root down to the front sole of the foot. The palms try to become lighter on the back foot until eventually you feel confident enough to lift the toes, tuck the heel, round the upper spine. Try lifting, holding, and lowering this interesting pose that I have learned to love. Until we're done with it. Maybe you're done now. Maybe you need to do this for about 10 more seconds. But we come back into tabletop eventually when you're ready. Okay, nice. Tabletop position. Now hover the knees, beast pose. So same thing what we were doing earlier, beast pose. And we stay here. This is gonna be the hardest part of class. This is the last part I meant. The last hard part of class. Root down through all four corners of your hands, hover the knees, make sure they're not lifted too high like mine. Lower, lower, they're hovering. Separate the shoulder blades, nice round upper spine. Your abs are contracting. 
You can tuck your chin or look between your hands. If you want more, lean into the left palm, touch your left shoulder with your right hand and lower. So you're crossing the hands and tapping the opposite shoulder. Lean into one palm, lift the other, tap. Lower the knees, make sure they're not too high. For five, your quad should be on fire. Four, three, two, one. Nice. Lower, untuck the toes, bring your hips back, reach your hands forward. Child's pose, Ananda Balasana. See if you can calm the breath. Calm the mind, imagine the armpits are going closer to the mat. Beautiful. I'm proud of you. Let's wind down, huh? Inhale to rise. <sighs> Tabletop position. Let's go into a little downward dog. Lift the hips up. <sighs> Reach the hands into the mat. Shoulders come near your ears. The heels can lift. The knees can be bent. <sighs> Lean into the right foot. Lift the left foot off the mat. Bring the left knee towards the right elbow tip. Extend the leg, sit the sit bones down. Seated straddle. <sighs> this is enough, or if you want to go side to side, folding, inhale to rise, exhale, fold over one leg. Your legs can be really far apart or they can be together. It doesn't matter. <sighs> I like to reach my chin towards my toe to prioritize the length of my spine. That's just me. You don't have to do that. Okay. When you're ready, lean back in and cross your legs. So this is gonna be somewhat of like a really easy sit. This is the closing of class. So if you wanna sit on a block, you're more than welcome to do so. Actually, I think I'm going to. Whatever like sitting position feels good for you, then get there with me, please. <sighs> Broaden the heart. The shoulders come near, the shoulders come away from the ears. Imagine the crown of the head reaches towards the sky. If you want to close your external gaze, you can. But we're here with the hands on the thighs. In the next few breaths, once you feel like you found a natural breath, little, little, little waves of the spine. So reach your heart, the back of your heart back, tuck your chin, and then the opposite, bring the heart forward. Maybe you look up or your chin goes up. Little small waves. If your eyes are closed, please open them. Bring your arms out to a T. Palms are facing forward. Lean your heart forward and look up. Exhale. Bring your heart back, the back of your heart back, and give yourself a hug. Tuck the chin if you like. One more time. Inhale, open the arms up. Exhale, nice big hug. This time, Change the crossing of the arms if you can. Do this two more times. And last but not least, bring your arms behind you. Bend the elbows to interlace the fingers. And reach the hands together down towards the mat down towards your low back sacrum. Open the heart and maybe you look up. And then exhale, bring the hands together towards the sky and then bring the forehead towards the mat. Do this a few more times.
thank you, thank you, thank you for practicing with me today. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day.